Over to Matthias. Okay, so this is um, OpenCast Workflow Touring Machine. This is a fun talk. So let's start with a warning. You won't learn anything. Don't try it at home. And I will give you a second to read that. Basically, I want to show that the workflow system is actually Turing complete. And what that does entail, I will tell you now. So let's start with what is a Turing machine. So you may know this guy, this is Alan Turing. And he's the inventor of the Turing machine, uh, which is a mathematical model for theoretical computer science where they can like, um, um, yeah, use, use it to prove like different things. Um, what you, what you should understand is that a Turing machine or the number of Turing machines that you can imagine actually corresponds to the number of program, programs that are out there. So, for instance, OpenCast. You can actually implement a Turing um, or create a, or describe a Turing machine that describes how OpenCast works. This is something from theoretical computer science. Uh, and what you, when you look at a system or a programming language, what you do, you can say that a programming language or a system is Turing complete. That means it could um, theoretically uh, be used to um, create or program any programming um, or any program like um, OpenCast, for instance. Um, what that does mean is that every system or everything that is Turing complete uh, can be implemented, can, can be used to implement every other, um, every program that any other Turing complete system um, also can program. Like when you take Java, for instance, which is Turing complete, and you take Ruby, that is Turing complete, you can implement in both languages uh, the same kind of stuff. So, what is a Turing machine? So, in a Turing machine, you have three basic construct, constructs, uh, concepts. You have uh, an infinitely long tape with different cells, and you have an alphabet where each of the cells um, holds a number or a, a, a symbol of the, of the alphabet. For instance, here we have one and zeros, but there can be like ABC, and you can imagine any symbol. And then there is a special symbol here, underscore, which is just a blank symbol. Uh, then you have a read and write head, which is basically the stuff that executes your program. Uh, the head can read the current number, so in this case it would read one, uh, zero, and it can write a number, for instance, one. And then you have a transition function, which basically describes how the program works. So uh, when you are reading a zero, what should be done next? So the inner workings of a Turing machine looks as follows. You have a couple of steps that are repeatedly executed. So you are in your program in a certain state. For instance, here you are in the state S1. And uh, then what you would do is first to read the current value, here a zero. Then you would set a new value depending on your state. Then you would move your head either to the right or to the left. And then you would switch the state. So when you have read a zero, you could switch the state to, or, um, to state two, or for instance, uh, remain in state one, and so on. And for that, you have a transition function. So um, let me uh, demonstrate how you would read that. So right now, uh, the read head would read zero, and we are in state one. So we can look at the states here. So we are in state one and we read symbol zero. That means that we would write the symbol zero, and we would remain in state one, and then we would get, go to the right. And we would repeat that until we are in state, um, state two, um, and read either a uh, blank symbol or, um, or a zero, and then we would halt the program. What this program describes, describes is, is actually a number increment, uh, incrementer. So with that program, you describe how you would, when you have a binary number, when, um, how you would increment it. And you can say that the state zero is actually um, 
would actually be there for skipping until you find the start of the number, so just skipping blank symbols. Then the state one is for finding the end of the number, so just um, going to the right until you find the number. And then the last state is for incrementing the, the number, so you go back to the left um, until you either find, uh, go all the way to the end of the number, and then you increment, uh, so you add a zero to the beginning, or you find a zero and just change the zero to a one, and that would increment the number by one. So, how do we do that in OpenCast? So we need a couple, for the couple of concepts, um, so we have an infinitely long tape. What can be used there? So, for instance, Metadata catalogs, right? So I implemented a custom metadata catalog, Dublin Core Touring. Then we have a read and write head. We have a workflow system, so let's use the uh, workflow operations. And for that, I can use configure by DC terms and the newly added transfer metadata, which was thankfully added in OpenCast 8. Then we have a transition function, which is just the workflow definition, right? Additionally, when, um, additionally, I have to include a uh, an addition, um, additional metadata catalog, which just holds uh, like every symbol of um, your alf alphabet. So in the case of uh, number incrementation, um, it would be blank, zero, and one. So let's demonstrate it. I have here a really normal OpenCast system. Uh, you, um, I've started this with uh, Docker Compose, and this is just a normal Docker Compose file, and that is um, the upstream OpenCast distribution. So no um, code changes, actually. Um, I have already started this, so here's it running in the background. And um, uh, so for the configuration, I have changed a couple of configuration files. So one of those was the dispatch interval to speed up the process for executing. Um, then custom properties was changed some, somewhat a lot, but I will come back to that. Uh, then I added a custom catalog for the tour, Dublin Core Touring. Uh, and what I did here is that I have um, an index. So um, I have um, a key. So when I have a key of zero, that would be the first entry in our, um, of our tape. And so on. So for very many numbers until a thousand. Okay, and then I have a list provider for actually uploading those files. But then everything else is uh, the same for like the default settings. So, and then I have um, a handy Ruby script that will generate workflows for me, given a um, given an Turing machine description. So I can give it a name, tell them what symbols are there, say what symbol is a blank symbol, have an initial state, describe the state, so when I am in state zero and I read a one, I will go to, I will write, uh, or I, will, I read a zero, I will write a zero, go, uh, go to state one and go to the right, right? Um, and also I have uh, extended that with uh, examples. So here I describe an example where I have this on the tape and my script will generate a script that will um, uh, use the right curl commands to upload that to OpenCast. So let's run the script and here are all the files that were generated. Um, so I have a handy script here that will upload this example to OpenCast and it will then be executed. So let's execute that script, and you can see there is a workflow description saying that the workflow has started, and you can see that there is also a workflow running right now. So what has uh, been done here? So the script is just a simple curl command script that uploads a couple of catalogs. So you can see I create a new media package, upload um, my Turing constant catalog, and then I upload an episode, a Dublin Core episode catalog to give um, that media package a name. And then I upload my tape, right? So the different symbols. Um, they are in the same folder. So here I have uh, my consent. So for each um, element of my um, alphabet, I have um, a key that is corresponding to the value. And you will see how I will use that later on. And then I have my tape. So here are um, the different indices for, from 0 to 4. I have a number here. 
And then there um, is a standard episode Dublin Core that just uh, sets the title. Okay, so let's look at the workflows. So first of all, I have a main workflow file here that is um, started um, that describes the program to increment numbers. And um, here's the first thing that is repeated throughout the different workflow, workflows here that are include, included later on. Configure by DC term. It's actually really nice for setting variables. So first of all, um, how does configure by DC term work? So configure by DC term sets variables depending on the values that you have in your catalog. So I have two catalogs, right? So one of those catalogs is Turing constants, which just holds, so we know the values there. They're always the same, they're constants. And what, um, what I check here is, when I look at the key blank, does it match the value blank? And we know that's always true. So if that is the case, two variables will be set, which we will later on be using uh, through the workflow. The first one is head index, which is set to zero. That means we will start from the first value in our tape. And the second one is state. So, so the, the initial state is S0, so we start from here. After that, I call the increment state switch um, workflow, or I include that workflow. And that is actually the workflow that will switch the state, so it will initiate um, executing from state zero. So let's have a look at that workflow. So the first thing that workflow is doing is to check if our current action is for halting the whole system. When we initially start um, the workflow, that v uh, variable is not set, so we don't halt the workflow. After that, we will just include um, our uh, a workflow for our current state. So, for instance, when we have state zero, we will include the workflow increment minus S zero. And you have a file for that. Um, let's uh, look at those. There are um, different um, workflows here for each of the state, and I will show you the state two. They are actually always the same, but uh, they vary depending on if the, what variables are actually set. So uh, you may remember that you have to implement a couple of actions for each iteration. So first of all, you load uh, the current index, so what is written on the tape at your current index. For that, um, we have an increment head load uh, workflow, and that workflow uh, will look at the current index and load the value. So how is it working? So we look at the Turing um, catalog, look at the position of head index, and check if it's either blank, zero, or one, and depending on the value, the correct head value variable will be set, right? So if that uh, workflow executes, we now have um, the value of our current position in the head value variable. Okay, so then we um, execute our setting method, for, so for writing uh, on, um, on the tape. Uh, for that, we have the set tape workflow. So let's have a look at that. Here, we use the um, configure by DC term. Uh, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, headset. So here, we use a newly introduced workflow operation, transfer metadata. And what that operation does is, when you have two different catalogs, it will copy one value to another catalog. So what we are doing here is we are depending uh, on the um, current um, value at our head, uh, writing the correct uh, constant, so we're copying from the constant catalog to our Turing catalog. So, um, <clears throat> uh, so for instance, when we are, have read a, a one, uh, um, no, when we have read a zero, we would run, want to write a one, right? Um, that is our definition of the Turing machine. So we just copy from the constants, we copy the value from DC terms 1. And uh, here in this case, we will copy from 1 to a 0, and here from blank to a 0. So um, if we have read a blank, we will write a 0 here, uh, a 1 here. Okay? We just copy the right constants from our constants um, catalog. 
So okay, then we have written on the tape, then we need to change the state, right? So for that we have a state set um, uh, workflow. So again, here we check for the head value, and uh, depending on the head value, we use the same trick again. So we have a configure by DC term, and um, this check will always be true. So we check if the value blank is equal to the value blank. It's always true. So um, the only check that is actually executed is here the if statement. So depending on the if statement here, we will set the state correctly. So if you have read a zero initially, we will set the state to three and hold the program. And um, then uh, when we have read a zero, we will go to the left and so on. After that, uh, we increment our head, so we will either go to the left or to the right, right? So for that, that's the most complicated operation. Again, we use the same trick where we check if true is equal to true, right? And then we will set the in head index with that complicated um, uh, variable setting here. So what this does here is just for your understanding. In the first um, iteration, it will replace the dollar variable with a dollar. It will replace the head index with the current index, for, ins for instance, five. It will replace the head move, for instance, with the right. And then we have a new variable here, right? So in the next iteration, it will replace that here. What is uh, right to five? A six. But where does um, do those variables here come from? You can actually um, use variables in from the custom properties file. So when you go to the all the way down here, you can see that I have a really long list here with many, many, many different numbers all the way to thousand. So that the right um, move is executed. Okay. So after that. Uh, we switch your switch state, and you have already seen that workflow. And that will be um, executed incrementally until the workflow is finished, right? So let's go to our workflow description here and see if the workflow has actually executed all the right steps. <laughs> and then we go to our, our extended metadata, and you can see that this number here was incremented to the next, the next higher one, right? So that works. I told you to not try this at home, but you can. <laughs> Use uh, exactly have fun. So I have shown you that OpenCast can run anything, right? Because it's Turing complete right now. But the really important question is, and I will leave that to another one, can it run crisis? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Matthias. I'm happy to see that the uh, hackathon on uh, Monday and Tuesday <laughs> was successful. Basically. <laughs>